Uh, amen. Tonight, I want to briefly speak to you on the seven C's of success. The seven C's of success. I don't know if you know, but the God that knows you wants you to be successful. You serve a successful God, and He wants His people to be very successful. God is not out to get your life or take life away from you. He's in fact out to get life to you. That's why the Bible says that Jesus has come to give us life and life more abundantly. So that means if God is successful, He wants His children to be successful. And the whole journey in church is not to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. The whole journey is to get us to become successful in our journey here on planet Earth. We are pursuing to become like Jesus in every aspect. That's the prize. That's the goal. We want to be as effective as Jesus in our world because the Bible says as He is, excuse me, so are we in this world. So there's nothing wrong in chasing Jesus. In fact, that is what you should do. And and if Jesus is successful, then God wants you to be successful in whatever area you find your life to be in. If you're a homesa leader, he wants you to be a successful homesa leader. If you're a pastor, he wants you to be a successful pastor. If you're a husband, he wants you to be a successful husband. If you're a wife, he wants you to be a successful wife. If you're a business owner, he wants you to have a successful business. If you're an employer, he, employee, he wants you to be a successful employee. Amen. So how am I speaking to the right kind of people tonight? Those who are ready to become more successful. I'm going to share with you the seven C's of success. These seven C's of success will help you to reach your full potential in life as a child of God. In fact, knowing Jesus or not, if you apply these to your life, you will be successful. So much more when you are a child of God, when you are a born again Christian. If you focus on these things, they're not difficult, only seven. You make them, in front, put them in front of you, make them a priority. You will see that your life will become very successful. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2, it says the following, Then the Lord answered, and said, uh, answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. The first thing for success, the first C, is clarity. Clarity. You need clarity to become successful. Here the Lord said, the Lord answered the prophet. Clearly the prophet asked him something and then the Bible says, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain. Not write the vision and nobody can find or understand anything. Make it plain. Write the vision like a man. A, B, C. Amen? Very simple, but make it clear. The Lord said, make, write the vision, make, the, make it clear. Don't make it difficult. Do not add to minor words. Just make it plain that those who read it can run with it. What's important with clarity is that you need to know your vision. You need to know your goals and you need to know your plans. So after you've written down your vision and you've made it plain, it's something that you need to have in your heart and in your mind. Well, I've got a surprise for homestead leaders this year because I'm gonna stop you any place, anywhere, and I'm gonna ask you, tell me your vision for your home cell, tell me your goals for your home cell, and tell me the plans, how you're gonna achieve it. Because many of you get it in hand, but you don't get it into your heart and into your mind. So clarity is when it's in your mind. You have put it, you've received it, you're running with it, but it's in your heart and it's your mind. Anybody can stop you and say, what is your vision for your home cell? What is the goal for your home cell? What's the plans? How are you going to achieve your goals? In, you know, people go into the world and they go to these conferences and they pay hundreds of thousands of pounds. And you come to church every Sunday and the Lord shares with the church every Sunday all these basic things for success for free. For free. And the church is still of the most unsuccessful people on the planet. 
Because many of you come to church on a Sunday like you sit here in front of me right now without a pen and a paper writing down what the Spirit of God is saying to you. And you think that because you're gonna memorize it. Now a short pencil is better than a long memory. You come to church and you're still on your phone. Look at your Facebook. No wonder you're not successful. And you ain't gonna be successful. You have to come to church on a mission. I am coming to be instructed by the Spirit of God. I'm listening to what God is saying. I'm writing down what the minister is speaking. Amen. It's just incredible that even church people will pay thousands of pounds to go to conferences and hear these things and do nothing about it. But anyway, it's for free tonight. Tell your neighbor it's for free. So know your vision. Know your goals and know your plans. Have clarity. Make sure, Homsa leader, that when you communicate on a Wednesday, no matter how many times the people are frustrated, should we do it again? Yes, you should do it again. Why should we do it again? Because you don't know it. Because it's not in your mind. It's not clear to you. So you should say, okay, what's our plans? Here's our plans. Boom, 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 boom. And then your people in the home cell need to know. They need to know the plans. So that when it comes to doing it, they're not surprised. It's going to be a tough year in home sales this year. Because you're going to declare every goal. You're going to declare everything. You're going to declare every plan. And I'm telling you today, if you don't want to do that as a member of our church, then you need to go find a religious church where you can sit and enjoy yourself. Because our church is on a mission. We're on a mission to multiply every campus. We're on a mission to make souls. We are on a mission to make souls, Ach, win souls and make disciples. We are on a mission to raise up leaders. We're not here to play games anymore. We're not here to sit around. This is not going to be a comfortable church for you. I promise you. Jesus didn't come to give us comfort. Jesus came to send us in the world, to change the world, Amen. to win souls, make disciples, raise up leaders, yes. plant churches. Yes. Amen. Not to sit around and have a holy huddle. And I want to say, just say this, it's off, off, off of the sermon, but I just believe that there's some people that need to hear that. Until you have fruit, zip it. Come on. Until you have fruit, do not come with ideas of how you should do it or we should do it. That's why you sit there and I stand here. And I'm not saying it arrogantly. If you bring to me the proof of your fruits and it's overwhelming more than what we're currently doing, then I promise you, I'll give you my full attention. And until that day, you are not here to instruct us. We are here to instruct you to do the work of the ministry, to be successful as a child of God in the ministry. Do you want to stand tall before Jesus one day and hear my good and faithful servant? Then you need to zip it, produce the fruit, and then have something to say. Say amen, that's good stuff, Pastor. It's this kind of stuff that will change your life, that will save you. Number two, know who you are. Amen. Know who you are and what you are called for. If you don't know who you are, the world will tell you who you are. If you don't know who you are, your rebellious friends will tell you who you are. You have to know who you are in Christ and what Jesus has called you for. I mean, in the beginning of your journey with Jesus, you cannot know it all. And it's impossible to know exactly what He has called you for. But you will know that He has called you to build the church. You will know that He has called you to change lives. Amen. So just focus. Just focus on that one. Just be faithful in every season. And as you are faithful in that, you will become more aware of who you are in Christ and you will also become more aware of what He has really called you for in life. Amen. We're talking about clarity. Is it helping you? Amen. Know what you want to achieve. It's important to know what you want to achieve. 
What do you want to achieve in your business? What do you want to achieve in this area of your life? What do you want to achieve as a home cell leader? What do you want to achieve as a pastor or a church planter? Are you with me? So it's very important to know what you want to achieve. The last one that I want to share with you is you have to have clear directions of where you are going. When you're talking about clarity, have clear directions of where we are going. That's why as far as we can from the church side, we give you the directions that we are going in this year. Amen. This month, this and this. That month, we're going there. That month, we're doing that. As far as possible, we're trying to clearly give to you clear directions. Amen. Amen. Number two, competence. The second C is competence. Ecclesiastes 10, 10 says, if the axe is dull and, does, and, and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. Right. But wisdom bring success. Okay. Say it with me. Wisdom bring success. Say it with me. I don't work harder, come on, but smarter. Let's try that again. I don't work harder, but smarter. That's wisdom. Remember that we are physical beings, created to do physical work, so we try to do physically more stupidly. Amen? In the Lord comes, He gives us wisdom, where we do not work just harder, but we work smarter. Amen. Amen. So, when it comes to competence, keep on developing yourself to become better. Amen. Keep on developing yourself to become better. There's a problem when you have leadership that is constantly behind your backside. Come on. Come on. You should have an inherent, what's the right word for it? It must be in you to be better. I want to be better. I'm, I, I'm reading books to become better. I, I, I'm going to church every Sunday to become better. I, I, are you guys with me? I want to develop myself to become better. So therefore, you need to learn to invest in yourself when it comes to self Improvement. Oh, so we have a conference. We have a men's conference. You want to become a better man? Then you invest yourself. You don't cry because you have to pay 50 pounds for the ticket to go to the conference. Which is actually cheap. You will pay 400 pounds or 500 pounds or even 1,000 pounds to go to another conference to help you to become successful. So you have to learn to put value to yourself, to spend money on yourself in self-improvement. Hello? Invest in yourself when it comes to self-improvement. Stop drinking 10 coffees a day, drink five, and take the rest of the money and buy a book. Amen? Stop watching your soap opera and start following some billionaires out there in the world that build bus great successful businesses. Okay. So, friends, when it comes to competence, it's important to sharpen yourself. And it's important to sharpen yourself in your field of expertise. So stop working, trying to remove the bad things all the time. Start working in what you are good in. Amen. Amen. Sharpen the areas that you are good in. Proverbs chapter 27, 17 says, as, sharpen, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. So when it comes to sharpening yourself, it's very important to understand the importance of having the right friends around you. If you're the sharpest tool in the room or in the shed, I think it's time to get another shed. Amen. If you're going to hang on 
and around the turkeys, then you're going to look like the turkeys, you're going to look like the turkeys, and you ain't going to fly with the eagles. Some of you need a new shed. You've been hanging on to tools that cannot be sharpened. And they're going to make you blunt. You are focused on self-development. Then you make sure that you get yourself around the right kind of people that can sharpen you. Amen. 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 Number three, the third C is concentration. You want to become successful? You need concentration. In Proverbs chapter 4, 26, it says, Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Ponder the path of your feet. Consider thoughtfully the path of your feet. Focus where you are going. Don't just wander like a headless chicken. No, no, ponder it. Have you ever seen somebody pondering on a thought? They're deep in thought. They walk around. You know, you talk it to them. And all the men say, amen. Amen. <laughs> Have you heard what I said? Ponder. Man, mind, mind is here. Deep in thought. Are you guys with me? So ponder the path of your feet. Focus on where you are going. Concentrate. When we're talking about concentration, we're talking about staying focused on your priorities. Staying focused on your priorities. Know your priorities and stay focused on your priorities. Avoid distractions. Can I have a big amen? Amen. The moment you start focusing on stuff, distractions come. Okay. So, you know, try to avoid them, but know that there's many that you cannot avoid. You just have to learn to deal with it. So the enemy uses distractions to steal your focus, to get you from your priorities. One of the things you also do is to steal your time. Satan is a life stealer. And time is life. And if you don't value time, you don't value life. And everybody that walked in after the fourth song today, say amen. I want to remind you, the service started at five, not quarter past five. Like some of you are in the habit of doing, not five past five. At five. So if you're a person that values time, you will be a quarter to five, 10 to five. Five by five to five, you sit. Because you value time. You're not a time waster. People that are constant late communicate that they are not time keepers. They don't value time. And they don't value your time. So they don't have any worry to steal time or life from you. So if you come late for my meeting, you've stolen my time. You've disrespected my time. So you need to think a little bit because the Lord, the God, your God, looks at these things. And it's amazing that most unsuccessful people are time wasters. They're never on time. What I can't understand is that you are born again. And it's the Lord's meeting because it's the Lord's day. And you will still be late. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you. Amen. And the Lord looks at these things. And he's going to keep you there, unsuccessful. Okay, so manage your time well. Learn to accomplish the most important tasks first. Amen. Every day, learn to accomplish the most important. There's every day some tasks that are more important than your program. So last night, you could have put down the tasks, and then tomorrow morning you woke up, or you wake up, and suddenly there's, out of the blue, some more important task that needs to be done. So you have to be flexible to prioritize, to shift and change. Be wise enough to discern what is now the priority in this moment and then learn to do that. 
Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Keep your focus on kingdom stuff, family. Kingdom stuff always first. Keep your focus on kingdom stuff. Kingdom is always first. Jesus is always first. He doesn't share second place in no relationship, nobody's life. He's your first and foremost priority. Amen. Amen. And when you are focused on Him, He will keep you in perfect peace. Who's, who's after perfect peace? Who would like to live every day of your life in perfect peace? Just keep Jesus the center. Just keep the kingdom the, the center, the priority. It's going to be a quick service. Number four. The third, fourth C. Constraints. Constraints. How can that make me successful? Well, it's part of the package. Challenges, problems, limitations will all arise on your journey to become successful. So you need to get used to it. Not like some of you emotional when you suddenly have a challenge or a problem or something happens and it's limiting you. Now you go in a total emotional fit. Nobody can get to you for three days. Nobody knows where you are. Leave all your priorities, leave home cell, leave church. Yeah, yeah very uncomfortable. Yeah. That's why constraints is part of becoming successful. You need to learn how to deal with challenges, Amen. limitations, problems. Amen. I mean, and re- learn to deal with it the correct way, the godly way. So step number one for Dealing with them is to embrace Amen. them as opportunities to grow. Right. I thought I gave my life to Jesus. Now I'm just sitting with problems and I sit with these challenges and I don't have. And <laughs> oh well, he's not going to make you stronger, show you that you're an overcomer if, you, if he can't take you through them. So the number one thing is he will never leave me nor forsake me. The second thing is, hey, I'm going to embrace these challenges, these problems, these limitations as opportunities for me to grow. I ain't going to see it as the end. I'm going to see it as stuff that I can use to become better, to grow. Family, these challenges, these problems, these limitations, they give you opportunities to find creative solutions to overcome them. So what God does with challenges and problems, you can take it to the bank, I promise you. This is bad news in the good news. You give your life to Jesus, this is the bad news. Problems. Problems that you've never thought you're going to have with people, the world, situations, suddenly just comes forth. Where does it come from? It's part of the growth opportunities. And these challenges, God allows them because God has made you to be a creative being. And if you don't lose your mind and go into a fit and cry and never come back to church, if you do the opposite of that and you, I'm going to take it on. God is with me. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to a home cell. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit speak to me. What's going to happen is the Holy Spirit and the Lord, through other men and women of God that's been through it, what is going to happen? They now suddenly are going to start to instruct you. They're suddenly going to help you. After you've embraced it, not as a death sentence, but as an opportunity to grow. And in them helping you, the Holy Spirit helping you, God helping you, people helping you, what's happening in you, suddenly there's some creativeness that comes through where you now creatively solve these challenges or problems or limitations. And that's what Jesus wants for you. He wants you to creatively find the solution for that challenge or that problem. Friends, always remember that Jesus was a problem solver and is a problem solver. So next time when you find yourself facing the challenges or the problems or the limitations, 
that's coming your way, please remember the following. Jesus and the church is not the problem. It's amazing that I find people in church, suddenly they have problems in their marriage, they have problems in their business, they have limitations here. What they do is now suddenly they blame the church. They blame Jesus. They're not the problem. You are facing challenges. Don't stay away from the Lord. Don't stay away from church. The Lord and the church is the vehicle and the source that God has given you to help you to face these giants, to face these situations, to creatively solve them God's way. And if you're going to run from church, it's amazing. You, you, you build the business, God blesses the business, you get problems in the business, and then the first thing that people do is, no, I'm too busy now, Pastor, I can't, go, I can't be a Hamsa leader anymore. Oh, no, I, I, you know, I need to settle my business. You can't come to church anymore. And now you're treating the church and the Lord and your relationship with the Lord as if the, that's the problem. That's not the problem. That's the solution. That's where you're going to get your creativity from. That's where you're going to create your solutions from. That's where God's going to share with you wisdom and insight through the Spirit and the Word that will sustain you for the rest of your life when that challenge appears later again in your life. So don't run from the Lord or from the church. Run to the Lord and to the church. Say it with me. Run to the Lord, to the church, not from the Lord and from the church. So when you go for challenges and problems, run to home cell. Run to prayer meeting. Throw yourself into more than ever the things of God. And you will see how He will help you to sort them out. Number five, the fifth C, continuous learning is important. Continuous learning is important. For every old CRC member older than 15 years, this is for you. Continuous learning is important. Say amen in every campus, all you beautiful, faithful, longevity, old furniture. Continuous learning is important. In 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study and be your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the Word of God. So we are on a mission to keep on learning. Amen. I've always said to you, learn to learn and never stop learning. You want to become successful? Learn to learn and never stop learning. I have found that successful individuals embrace continual learning. They continually learn because they stay curious. No matter how big they are, I have found it. It's amazing. It's just amazing. It's a trait that successful people have. I have found, uh, 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 been around many, many successful people in the world, in the church, and one of the things that stands out when you are around them, they are very, very curious. They ask you about your life. They ask you about your journey. They ask you about your job. They genuinely curious to learn because they became successful not just learning from people behind or in front of them, but people behind them. They are curious beings. Successful individuals keep on seeking wisdom and knowledge in every, every area in an ever-changing world. So you look at them, you study of them, you, be, you are around them, you find that they can learn from everything and in an ever-changing world. And you have to be like that because the world is changing. 
And if you get stuck in 1930, you're not going to make it in 2030. You're going to walk into AI and you're not going to know what to do or what hits you. Amen? So stay curious. Tell yourself every day, I am on this planet to learn. Until Jesus comes and after that, I am here to learn and I will keep on learning. I'm curious. I can learn from everything and every situation. Everything that happens to me is to train me. So I'm focused to seek wisdom and knowledge in an ever-changing world. The sixth C is commitment. Commitment. Friends, be determined and persistent to achieve your goals, even in the face of setbacks and obstacles. So set out your goals. Be persistent to achieve your goals. I'm telling you, the moment you set out your goals is the moment the enemy starts to make plans to come against those goals. So be determined. You're a home cell leader. This year, in the name of Jesus, I will multiply my home cell. I will raise up a 2IC, a 3IC. I will see people come to church. I will see people get involved. I see people changing the world through my home cell. I am determined. I am persistent. First Wednesday of the year, of the six or seven people you had on your list, only one pitch. Do you know the feeling? Don't cry. Don't take it on yourself. Tell yourself, I am determined. Next week is going to be better. I'm going to persist. This is just a short setback, an obstacle to steal my motivation. But I know the works of the enemy. I'm determined. I'm persistent. This is just a small setback. And I'm going to overcome this obstacle. So the next week, you don't just invite that, that seven people to your home cell. You invite 14 other people as well. Just get up. Don't let him knock you down. True success cannot be achieved without perseverance in all circumstances. You want to be successful in the things of God? You cannot always be willing and persistent to achieve your goals, when everything is going for you as a child of God. Amen. To become successful is actually the opposite. You need to persevere when it's actually not going your way. When the winds of the storm is in your face and not behind your back. When everything is not going your way, can you still worship the Lord? Can you still praise? Can you still jump? Can you still go and pray for brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so? Can you still go and love somebody else when you feel, un feel unloved? Can you still encourage somebody else that's going through your same situation as if you are the conqueror of that situation? I say it to you so many times. Do you think every Sunday I want to come and preach to you folk? Hmm? You are totally out of it if you think I want to come and preach every Sunday. I love to preach. I love to help. I love to share God's Word. But sometimes I need, to, I need to drag myself. I need to put on a smiley face. And I just need to do it. I also have a cat and a dog that fought at home. Amen. And that's not, okay, it's the cat and the dog. Also go through things. I mean, last Sunday I woke up with the biggest cold I've had in a long time. You, none of you would even have thought of it, saw it. But I had to come because I knew the word is important. It's a fresh word from the Lord for those who are there that day. It's not about me. If I want to become successful, it's so easy for me to phone one of the pastors and say, hey, I'm pulling a hammy, go preach to them. Because they are in place. But it doesn't work that way. Okay, so be, persevere in all circumstances. 
Amen. amen. In season, out in season, when they like it, when they don't like it, when they say amen or not say amen, preach it, share it, help them. One day in heaven, you will all thank me. Um, when it comes to commitment, you must have a strong sense of purpose. Amen. Homsa leader, what is your purpose? I've got, the big, I've got the greatest job description in the universe. I have a more important role than the president of the uh, um, uh, United States or Russia or China. I don't know who's the boss these days. But being a home cell leader, you have an eternal purpose. They have a physical and worldly purpose. You've been appointed by the chief. Amen. In fact, they should stand up when you walk in. And well, that's going to happen one day, so don't worry. I'm just saying, you have to carry yourself differently. You have to have a strong sense of purpose. Why am I a home cell leader? Because I want to help people grow. I want to help people achieve everything that they can in the Lord. I want to be there blessing them. But I'm going to be a home cell leader till I'm 85? No. I'm going to become successful and I'm going to multiply and I'm going to grow further and I'm going to plant the church and I'm going to change a nation, amen, or a city or a community. <coughs> Excuse me. The last C, and everybody say, praise the Lord. Courage. Courage. You want to become successful? You need courage. So take bold action and do not be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. Hello? There's no success without bold action. Stepping out of your comfort zone. Oh, we are such comfort junkies. Want to do big things for God, but we can't take small steps out of the comfort zone. Amen? If you want to become successful, take bold action. I had the privilege a few years ago to be among some of the greatest older men of God uh, on, our, on, our plan, in, on, on the earth today uh, and asking them a few questions. One of the most important questions that I've ever asked them or what was asked in the room was, if you could do it all over again, what would you have done different? And almost simultaneously, all of them, and there were three or four in the room, said, I would have dreamed bigger Ask God to do more because everything I asked Him to do, every plan I set, every vision I had, He met. That's incredible. So I want to encourage you to dream bold dreams. Make big plans. Amen. Because God is faithful. You have to be prepared to take calculated risks. Oh, suddenly it's okay. all quiet on me. Calculated risks. You have, to, there is no success without risk. You must be willing to face uncertainty to un- achieve your aspirations. No, no, I want exact. I want to know. I want to know what I'm going to get at the end of the month. I want to know exactly how I'm going to get there, how it, uh, We do not well do well with uncertainty. But successful people learn to do well with uncertainty. They embrace it. So you need to face uncertainties in your journey to achieve your aspirations. If you are going to turn around and run or cry, it ain't going to happen. You have to learn and say, Lord, it's not the end of the world. It might be the end of this world, but not my world. Because I'm not losing. You are with me. I'm in the winner's team. You said we are the head and not the tail. You said we are above and not beneath. So I stand upon your word. I call upon your word. I'm just repeating what you said. So now you do what you said you're going to do. The moment you start to take risks and stuff, the devil comes with, oh, it's going to fail. What are people going to say? You're going to fail. 
rebuke that devil. Tell him, I'm not a failure. I cannot fail. God's with me. God cannot fail. He made me the head and not the tail. Great is he that lives in me than he who lives in the world. It might me look and appear that I'm going to fail, but I ain't. I ain't going to lose. I ain't going to fail. And you, you have to say it to yourself. You have to believe it as you say it. And then you need to stand and see how the Lord brings the deliverance. And all the successful people say, Amen. 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 In Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 and 9, I'm leaving you this. It says, no, no man shall be able to stand before you. This is what God is saying to every CRC member that's on the journey to success. That's faithful building the kingdom. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Tabu, I will be with you. Amen. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong. And of good courage. Look how the Lord is encouraging Joshua, this young leader that has a huge task. He's taking over from Mo. Hello? Moses. Moses that calls the seven plagues. Moses that spoke to a burning bush. Mo. Hey, he's taking over. He's got a huge task. He saw Moses leading these, this, almost say, delusional disciples through the wilderness for 40 years. He saw the challenges Moses had leading these people. And now God's calling him to divide the land, the promise, the, the possession. Think about the pressure. And listen to what God is saying. He says, no man shall be able to stand before you. I'm telling you, if you walk with Jesus, no man. That's why the Bible says he makes a table for you in the face of your enemies. And shockingly, sometimes your enemies can be your brothers. But I'm telling you, if you walk with Jesus, no man, no man can stand before you. No man. All the days of your life. As he was with Moses, so we will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. It's God's promise. Come on. He says, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to your fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the left or the right or the right to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Hello? Forward thinking. We believe the word, we speak the word. It says you shall become successful because the word of God will be in your mouth. You will read it and you will speak it. You will read it and you will say it. When the enemy attack you, you will share the scripture. Oh, you're going to be a failure. Oh, God can't use you. No, 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 no. God can use me. I will never fail. Do not turn from it to the right or the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but, shall, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. <laughs> I just want to say this because there's some delusional people in the world as we know it. You cannot preach the Word of God and not become prosperous. Sharing the Word of God to people makes everybody prosperous. Oh, I don't come to CRC because Pastor Tabo is a prosperity preacher. I don't want to offend you, but your level of intelligence is shocking. Have you read the book? The book says, if you read it and you speak it, and it's in your mouth, you shall make your way prosperous. So what should I preach? 
Harry Potter? So the level of the intelligence of people like that is shocking. They go to university and they get degrees and stuff, but they, they come up with that. Just sharing the Word of God to you tonight is going to make my life prosperous. Amen. It's going to make your life prosperous. I don't share with you the Word to get anything out of it. Because my value is not in my salary. My value is in who He made me and called me. And I believe His Word, that when I eat His Word, speak His Word, share His Word, He's true to His Word. So next time when they come to you and say, oh, you are in that prosperity preaching church. I say, what kind of church are you only? Because the church of Jesus that preaches the Word the promise that the Lord gives is their ways will be prosperous. Yes, that's right. Amen. So, um, that's for your friends. <laughs> Share that with them, this message. It will help their intelligence. He says here, for then they will make your ways prosperous and then you will have good success. Interested in good success? What should you do? Share the word. Share the word. Share the word. What are you sharing with your family? What are you sharing with your people? What are you sharing with your colleagues? Are you sharing the word with them? Share the word, people. You want to be successful? You want God to make your ways successful, prosperous? Share the word. Home cell leader. You go to home cell, everybody comes there grumpy. Nobody wants to really be in the Word. All Everybody wants to do is have fellowship, drink coffee, and uh, hang, hang. No, no. You want this home cell to be prosperous and successful. No, guys. Woo. Praise and worship, prayer, declarations, sharing the Word. In season, out of season, if they like it, if they don't like it. Because you know better. You know what God has said to Joshua. What is God saying to you? He says, have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I hope these seven C's will help you on your journey to be successful. There's a physical way and there's a spiritual way. Do not let the physical way violate the principles of the spiritual way. <sighs> because as a child of God, you will not become successful. And that's what many Christians do today, born again Christians. They take these physical, worldly principles, their friends apply them, they become successful. You apply them, but you violate the spiritual principles and you don't become successful. And then you wonder why. Because you are in a different camp. You are different. Because God is more interested in building your character than bringing you success. So you can't apply these successful seven C's in your life outside of church by violating all the spiritual principles that you found in the church and think it's gonna go well with you. It ain't gonna go well. You're gonna go around the mountain for 40 years. You're gonna become bitter, angry, spiteful, blame God, blame the church. Stop it. God wants you to be successful, spiritually and physically. But Spiritual is always more important than physical. I don't know who's listening to me tonight. Don't violate spiritual principles thinking that you're going to be physically successful. As a child of God, you're going to go nowhere fast. But I do promise you that if you focus on these seven C's, 
and you stay in spiritual principles, then you will see how your life journey of success will develop and grow. And the key thing is keep on sharing God's Word. Keep on eating God's Word. Keep on speaking God's Word. Keep on giving God's Word. And you will see how the Lord will path a way of success for you in your life. Amen. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. Don't want to move around. Before we go tonight, I want to pray for those who do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You might be coming tonight to church for the first time. Maybe you've come for a long time. But what I want to ask you is one simple question. If you die tomorrow, will you wake woke up in heaven? Do you know that your life is right with God or not? Because this is the ultimate of success is being right with God as a human being. The Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but he loses his soul in hell? You see, the success of the world is not the success that God wants for us. You become successful as a human being when God creates you anew and you have right standing with Him and you are in relationship with Him. That's the ultimate success that we need to strive for. And before I go tonight, I wanna pray for people that's not sure about their relationship with God, their standing before Him. Before we go tonight, I wanna encourage you to make right with God. I wanna encourage you to allow me to pray for you and with you a simple prayer that will change your life forever. And maybe you are sitting somewhere in another campus or watching online and you know that tonight is the night that you're going to make sure that you leave here in right standing with God. Then let me pray with you. So quietly, unashamedly, before we go tonight, you like me to include you in this prayer. I want you to do something for me. I want you just to pop up your hand, say, show me by hand and say, here, Tabu, here I am. Pray for me. I want to be included in this prayer. I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. I want to be born again. I want to receive everything God has for me. I want to leave here with the full assurance of eternal life. Pray with me. And we're going to pray with you. If there's anybody here tonight that I can pray for. Thank you. I see your hand. If you put your hand up, you can put it down. But if you haven't, maybe you're saying yes in your heart. Let your hand be an extension of your heart. This is a safe place to make a good choice to come back home. So, you haven't put up your hand yet, you know you should, slip it up quickly, say, Tabu, here I am, pray for me. Thank you, I see your hand, thank you, I see your hand. If you put it up, you can put it down. In every other campus, come on, there in Southfields, there in East Barnet, Seven Oaks, Sawbridgeworth, come. Tonight is your night. No more running away from God, now we're gonna run to God. You know that He's talking to you, you know that you want this, so come on, let's, let's take courage, be brave, take a bold step. Let us pray for you. So Father, we thank you for everybody that's saying yes in their hearts. Everyone that put up their hands, let your kingdom come and your will be done in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 So all God's successful people, please stand your feet and give Jesus a very big hand. And before we go, like I said, I need to pray with you. You've put up your hand, you haven't put up your hand. But in every church auditorium, I wanna encourage you now, just to step out of your seat to the front of every auditorium where we are gonna pray with you. So you've put up your hand, you haven't put up your hand, you know you need to be included in this prayer. Quickly come, let me pray for you. Take a bold step, come on. Get out of your seat, ask the person next to you to walk with you, they will gladly walk with you. But come, let us pray with you tonight. Tonight is your night. Come on, God loves you and He has a great plan for your life and tonight everything is going to change so quickly come let us pray with you come come to jesus come to jesus come
Amen, amen. I oh, thank you so much to, for all of you that step out. I want you all to look up to me. I want every one of you that's in the other auditoriums to give me your attention. I want you to know this truth. No man can get you to do this. The Bible says when we lift Jesus up, He will draw people unto Him. So no matter what you've done, what you've gone through, tonight everything is gonna change because Jesus is calling you. And I wanna say thank you for the opportunity to pray with you. I want you to know that there's power in this moment. Things are gonna change in your life. So let me lead you in a simple prayer. I want you to, all that's standing in front of a church or everyone that maybe you're still sitting, standing somewhere and you haven't come out to, to the front, but you said yes in your heart, let's pray together. Put your hand on your heart and pray after me as I lead you. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for today that you spoke to my heart. I've heard your voice. I know I'm a sinner in need of your grace, in need of forgiveness. So today, I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sins. I repent today. I'm turning my back on my past. I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And today, I am saved by Him. So thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for acceptance and for forgiveness. I receive it all in Jesus' name. I am asking you to fill me with the Holy Spirit, to plant me in your church and to use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, I am saved, I am new, I'm forgiven. Amen and amen. So if you find yourself standing in front of a church, I want you to quickly look left, look right. You'll find people waving at you. Please do me a favor. Follow them out of the auditorium where we will give you a Bible and a gift. And then we're gonna bring you straight back. If you are watching online, you prayed that prayer, please go on our streaming platform, put down your details so that we can get hold of you. We wanna send the right materials to you and we wanna connect you. To the, to the house of the Lord and we want to be with you on your journey forward. Amen. I want to say thank you for everybody that's with us tonight in all the campuses and churches. Looking forward to see you guys next Sunday. Go this week into the world and find somebody that you can help to change their life. Always remember church before I go, the fruit of a church member is another church member. A fruit of a discipler is another disciple. A fruit of a pastor is another pastor. A fruit of an usher is another usher. Amen. All the Red Army ushers say amen. So let's keep on helping people to become better and look forward to see each other every Sunday in this atmosphere. We love you guys. We're excited for this year to start and uh, we are looking forward for to great things. God bless you and bye-bye. Amen.